HIV. It's this incredibly tenacious virus that causes AIDS. And for years, we've come to think of it as something that can only be managed, but never cured. Managed thanks to the antiviral drugs we have today, drugs that made it possible to survive what was once a sure death sentence. But the drugs aren't a cure. They can keep the virus in check, but if you stop taking them, the virus will snap back. It will come back. And these drugs are still not available to millions of people around the world infected with HIV. But we now know from a few patients so far, a cure for HIV is possible. And that cure came from a bone marrow transplant. And that's something I'm very familiar with because I am an oncologist, a cancer doctor. And for more than 25 years, I've been treating cancer patients by giving them bone marrow transplants. And now, I want to take what we've learned from these years of transplant experience and combine it with these new advances in gene therapy and gene editing and develop a cure for HIV that does not require a cancer treatment, a bone marrow transplant, but a cure that could be given through a simple injection, a shot in the arm, and made available to anyone with living with HIV, even in places that lack medical infrastructure. So to understand how this came about, let me start with the Berlin patient, the first person ever cured of HIV. His real name is Timothy Ray Brown. He actually grew up right here in Seattle, but was known as the Berlin patient because he was living in Berlin at the time of his treatment. Timothy had incredibly bad luck. He was stricken with both leukemia and HIV. He needed this bone marrow transplant to treat and survive his leukemia. But fortunately, fortunately, his doctors had a different idea, a more daring idea to also treat HIV at the same time. You see, HIV is a virus that sneaks into our blood cells through a kind of trap door. And part of this trap door is a protein we call CCR5. It turns out that about 1% of people in Europe carry a pair of CCR5 genes that are broken or mutated. And this mutation jams that trap door shut. HIV cannot get in. And these few lucky people with this mutation cannot get HIV or develop AIDS. So, Timothy's doctors in Berlin knew about this mutation, so they were looking for and found a bone marrow donor who was not only a tissue match with Timothy for the transplant, but also carried this critical mutation in their blood cells. So, the big idea, the big question now was, what if this CCR5 mutation takes hold in Timothy? Could this fight off and cure HIV? And it did, it worked. That same bone marrow that Timothy received to replace his immune system and fight his leukemia also carried with it this critical mutation, this very critical mutation that made also his blood cells resistant to HIV. And so now, Timothy has been living for more than 12 years, not only cancer-free, but also free of HIV. Here's Timothy celebrating his 10-year anniversary, living without HIV. For more than a decade, my colleagues and I have wanted to, do, to duplicate this experience. We wanted more Timothy Ray Browns. And finally, Timothy's no longer alone. <laughs> this year, two more people have likely cures using the same technique, a bone marrow transplant. Like Timothy, they both had cancer and HIV. And like Timothy, they both received bone marrow transplants from HIV-resistant donors. So it looks like we found a cure for HIV, right? But why then 
can't we cure everyone's HIV today? That's because these bone marrow transplants are quite risky and very hard for patients to endure. And while these risks may be acceptable for someone dying from cancer, not so for someone without cancer who can survive HIV with antiviral medication. You also have to be lucky enough to live in a country with the kind of expensive high-tech medical facilities and infrastructure that is necessary to do these bone marrow transplants. And remember, those CCR5 mutations are rare, and there are far too many people living with HIV, and simply not enough donors, doctors, or money for this kind of cure to reach the millions of people infected with HIV. To date, AIDS has killed about 32 million people. There are almost 38 million people living with HIV today, and more than half of them live in Sub-Saharan Africa. What's worse, about 15 million people infected with HIV still do not have access to these life-saving antiviral medications that can at least keep the virus in check. So, we need a new approach. My team has been working on genetically engineering these CCR5 mutations, that HIV resistance, directly into a person's own blood cells. This is what we call gene therapy or gene editing. We use a remarkable new tool you may have heard of called CRISPR, a kind of molecular scissors for cutting and gene editing. CRISPR gene editing works like a word processor. You see, it can cut and make changes, not in sentences, but in the DNA. So we can now cut and edit in that very same mutation that protects Timothy Ray Brown into a person's own blood cells. We edit the blood stem cells. Think of the blood stem cell as the mother of all blood cells. By inserting these CCR5 mutations into these blood stem cells, HIV resistance will be passed down to all the other blood and immune cells, including those T cells, the primary target for HIV infection. We can even insert instructions for these immune cells to seek out and destroy any remaining HIV-infected cells in the body. So hopefully completely erase HIV in a person. So the huge benefit of gene therapy for HIV is that there would be no need for a bone marrow transplant from one of these rare bone marrow donors who are naturally resistant to HIV. But instead, we can remove an infected person's own stem cells and take them to a specialized facility and laboratory, and then genetically modify and tweak these CCR5 genes and shut that trapdoor against HIV. We can then put those modified cells back into the patient and wait for them to take hold. We call this ex vivo gene therapy because the editing of the patient's cells happens outside the body in a specialized facility. Now, this ex vivo gene therapy is already being studied in patients in clinical trials using CRISPR and other gene therapy technologies. And the results are actually very exciting. For example, for sickle cell disease. You may have heard about this earlier this week. Or for babies born without an immune system, what we used to call the bubble boy disease. These studies tell us that gene therapy can work. It can cure diseases. So we hope it will also work for HIV. But as exciting as this approach is, this ex vivo gene therapy approach, it still requires chemotherapy for these modified cells to take hold in patients. And it still requires these high-tech, expensive medical facilities, just like those bone marrow transplants. So we're back to that same problem. This approach will not be available to the millions of people living in places 
that would need a cure the most, like Sub-Saharan Africa. So how do we make this next leap? How do we make a gene therapy that would be available to people everywhere? I want to create a gene therapy that can be given in any doctor's office with a simple injection. And I call this gene therapy in a syringe. <laughs> so how do we do this? How do we get our gene therapy, our gene editing tools and technology into a syringe so it can be delivered to a patient's cells inside their body? Well, one way is by hacking a virus, of all things, by stealing a few tricks viruses use to infect us. Consider what viruses like the common cold virus do to survive. They sneak into cells, inject them with their own genes, and then they take over the genetic machinery, forcing the cells to churn out more and more viruses instead of the proteins these cells need to stay alive. But, but fortunately, we can repurpose these viruses and their ways of sneaking into our cells. We can strip out all the bad stuff from them and replace it with our gene editing scissors and instructions for installing that same kind of HIV resistance that protects Timothy Ray Brown. We can now put this gene therapy into a syringe and we could then also package and ship this gene therapy around the world to any doctor's office. And then, with a simple injection, let these stripped viruses, these Trojan horses, carry our gene editing instructions directly to those blood stem cells, those mother cells inside the patient. So HIV resistance can again get passed down to all the other blood and immune cells inside the body. Now, this is not pie in the sky. In preclinical studies, we've already shown that this kind of in vivo, inside the body gene therapy can work for certain conditions, like the bubble boy disease. In animals born without an immune system to fight off infections, a single injection a single injection can restore their immune function so they can survive and live a normal life outside of a protective plastic bubble. So imagine, imagine, in the not too distant future, with a single injection, a single shot in the arm, we deliver the recipe that will make ordinary blood and immune cells resistant to HIV and make, turn them into HIV fighters. And that recipe in the form of genetic code will be ferried within the shell of a virus whose only purpose in nature, after all, is to sneak DNA or RNA into cells. It will still take some time to perfect and make sure make sure it is safe. But we are getting closer. And we think the same kind of gene therapy in a syringe approach could work for other conditions, like sickle cell disease, which just like HIV affects millions of people and is much more common in places with limited medical resources. So my dream, my goal is to make this in vivo, this inside the body gene therapy work so we can cure people, no matter who they are or where they live. More than 50 years ago, a doctor named Don Thomas was, pi was pioneering bone marrow transplants right here in Seattle. The diagnosis of leukemia at that time was pretty much a death sentence, a little bit like the diagnosis AIDS in the 1980s. Quite a few doctors back then thought Dr. Thomas was probably a little bit crazy for treating leukemia with bone marrow transplants. And today, more than a million people have been treated with bone marrow transplants, and the survival rates have improved from zero 
to more than 90% for certain diseases. And that's why I came to Seattle more than 25 years ago to work alongside people who dared to make such a crazy leap to cure cancer. And it's now time to make the same kind of leap for HIV and AIDS, so we can shift from managing HIV and AIDS to actually curing it. Thank you. Thank you very much.